Hey guys, what's up? I went ahead and picked up the DJI Neo. This is a super cool little drone. Um, there's another drone very similar to this and I don't remember the exact name, but unfolds and I've been watching it and I wanted to pick it up and I was just like, I don't know. And then DJI dropped this at a really good price point. This is a $200 drone. This is a drone that is more intended for like your basic everyday user, right? And this thing has so many cool little features. Some gotchas if you're a part 107 pilot like myself um, that you have to look out for. But in this video, I wanna test out some ways around that maybe. So for instance, remote ID. Um, remote ID, you need a module for this. If you're gonna fly this for anything commercial, you have to have a, a remote ID module attached to this drone. This drone only weighs, I believe it's 135 grams. So this definitely falls under that 255 grams to register. But if you're a part 107 pilot, you have to register this drone because uh, you're using it commercially. So there's a few little gotchas, but let's go ahead. Let's get this thing out of the box. Let's get it tested out and let's see if we can possibly use some of the stuff that I already have from some of my other drones to kind of get around having to buy a module. So let's get this thing out of the box. All right, so let's go ahead, let's get this thing out of the box. I cannot imagine this has a whole lot in here. I literally just got the basic version, the $200 one, I didn't get the extra batteries, I didn't do anything extra, just the $200 drone. Uh, again, like I noted in the intro, I've got a controller, I've got you know enough battery backups to charge this thing, and it flies for, I think, 15 to 18 minutes, I believe, is the flight time. So really interested to check that out. So let's go ahead, let's get this out of the box and see what's all in here. It's probably just the drone and a battery, but let's check it out. So right there, we've got the drone. So here we've got our manuals and we've got our stickers. Again, I've noted in several videos, I do love stickers. Um, I probably have way more than I should. I have literally a satchel of stickers at this point. Uh, it's a zipper pouch rather and I literally just stacking the stickers up and I put them on random things. So, but you've got your manuals here. You've got your QR codes for your apps and then of course your stickers and it looks like quite a few stickers actually in there. So we've got that. And then in this little pouch here, let's go ahead and just see what's in here. I believe this is gonna be, oh no, this is not the battery, okay. So you get a screwdriver with this. Again, this is the basic com or basic version, right? This doesn't have anything extra in it. Um, you get a USB-C to C cable, really cool. That is all that's in this pouch or this box there. And you look like you get one, uh, two extra props, so that's good. Now these do have ducted engines, or this does have ducted engines rather. So hopefully you're not breaking your props too much, but I mean, there's always chance that that could happen. And I mean, look at this thing. It is so tiny. I mean, this is a little, like palm of my hand. It is basically the size of the palm of my hand. That is super, super cool. Um, it looks like it has like downward facing sensors. This does not have any obstacle avoidance sensors. So it is using algorithms inside AI to basically decide where it's going and what it's gonna do um, so it doesn't crash. I've seen some videos where it decides to crash. Um, so you do have to watch that. You've got a little gimbal cover here. There it is. They always try to figure out which way, how that goes. So it is a, um, it looks like only a one axis gimbal, uh, but it's kind of like an FPV drone. So that makes sense to me. Um, and then you've got on top here, it looks like you've got your mode selector that you can change different modes. And I've put this in backwards. Hold on, let me turn that down. I don't like where that um, camera is angled. Uh, so let's put that in there. And again, like I noted, you do have these, that just fell off. Uh, <laughs> we'll leave that off. Um, you do have these ducted engines, so that is nice. That actually is what allows this to be, I believe, and you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, if you have this registered and you have a remote ID module on this, the ducted engines and the weight of this drone allow this to be a category one. And that is really cool because nothing right now that I'm aware of is really a category one drone that we have. Um, it doesn't have, nothing has really completely ducted engines and that's really, really cool. Um, again, why I'm so interested in this. This is a super compact drone, the size of my cell phone. I can take this with me. 
Um, I can fly this at a lot of my shoots when I'm going out and shooting for the PBS channel or whatever it may be. So there's instances where this could come in handy. Maybe I don't want to take my big expensive gimbal and I want to just have this do a tracking shot, right? Like this, this is very capable of that. Um, so very, very cool. It does come with a battery. I'm going to see, that looks like the power button. Okay, so you just disconnect this here. Again, I've never had this, I've, this first time opening it. So a little tiny battery. I mean, that's a little tiny battery. I believe if you get the kit with the extra batteries, you get three of these. And they do the same thing that the charging case does for the Avada 2, I believe. I believe you can like charge, I think, and I could be wrong on that, but I believe they charge each other and then they can also charge a device so they can be like a battery bank for something. So that's, I, I like that a lot of devices are starting to do that. Um, they're starting to basically be a battery bank for something else. So if you maybe don't need that, you can use it somewhere else down the line. So let me go ahead. I'm going to pull this sticker off here. Uh, well, what does this say? Let's read the stickers as in the past videos. Uh, charge to activate the battery. Okay, so I have to charge this. So I'm going to go ahead, hook this up to a charger, see where the charge state is, and we will get back into the video as soon as I do that. All right, so we've got a little bit of charge in here, only got about two and a half um, of the battery level there, so not bad. So mine did come pretty much all the way dead. All right, so I wanna go over a couple of the drone modes here. We've got this little box with a dot in the middle, that is follow. So that's gonna be where the drone starts at. And then you're gonna have um, droney mode, which is basically gonna like take off and go away from you. That's the dot with the arrow going away. So it's gonna create that drone like pull out effect. You've got circle over here is the next option. You've got rocket mode, which is gonna do the like take off and like aim down at you and like take off and go over your head real high or to 400 feet. Um, and then you have, I believe it is spotlight mode. So you've got that and then you've got the little human icon here that's custom. So you can go in, I believe in the app and customize that. So let's go ahead, let's turn this on here real fast. So we'll turn this on and standard startup, just like any DJI drone, it does the gimbal stuff. So it already says here that it is on um, the follow mode. So we go into the app, DJI Fly app. You go, once you start up the app, you go to connection guide. You find the drone that you want to connect to, in this case, the DJI Neo. And we have three different modes. So we can do the connect with goggles and the RC controller, connect with RC only, or connect via mobile. I am going to try RC only. Let's see if this will work. I'm going to click on that. Connecting. Press and hold the power button for three seconds to confirm. So we're going to hold for three seconds. Okay, so this is just to show you how you would connect. It's gonna ask you on your phone to join the Neo. So you're gonna join that. And theoretically here, it will sync up to your phone. Again, this is turning your phone into the controller. You don't technically need this, but you know, I would do it and might recommend it just because, hey, you know, you might want a controller. If something goes awry or something like that, um, I just, I would feel safer with it. Skip my DJI refresh here, no reason. I activated, cool, all right. And of course there is a update. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that, see if we can not have to worry about it. It's gonna tell you about choosing your flight mode. So uh, your first flight here, you're gonna take off, film in follow mode, land and switch modes. So you're gonna point the camera at your face. So it's, it's walking me through this, this is really cool. So this is a very simple thing. So we're gonna take it right here. And if we do what it says to do, we're gonna to touch this button. Drone. So that's, that's cool. It tells you what Rocket. mode you're going to be in. Spotlight. Spotlight. Helix. Helix mode, that's cool, okay, awesome. Follow. Follow, awesome. All right, so place the aircraft in the palm of your hand um, at your face, press and hold the mode button of the aircraft to confirm the flight mode. So we're gonna press, I'm gonna aim it at my face here, right? I'm gonna press and hold. And hopefully we don't crash. Here we go. That is super cool. This is also going to give you kind of an idea that of the noise level. So it's not quite the DJI Avada, which was like super buzzy sound, you know, like the, uh, a bunch of bees, but it's definitely a higher pitch. So this is again, it's like a 10 by 10, 10 by 12 room. And you're definitely hearing that re reverb off the walls. So this is gonna be follow mode, so I'm gonna back up away from it a little bit. Let's see what it does. Will it follow me? 
Uh, so apparently I'm not far enough away. Let's see if it follows me. Oh, look at that. It is following me. This is really, really cool. Um, now, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just moving around. Obviously, I'll test this more. All right, so I'm done filming. Let's go ahead and land. It says to place my palm out. Will it figure it out? Oh, there we go. Okay, so you have to put your hand directly under the drone. Um, it doesn't see your hand if it's forward. That makes sense considering there's these little sensors down here, and I'm assuming that's what it's using to detect that. That was really, really cool. Um, I have to say, I am impressed with that. Press and hold the mode button uh, to switch modes. Okay, so it's gonna do that. Yeah, finish the tutorial. I don't wanna, okay, cool. And so let's go ahead, let's flip this over here. I do not wanna go to Droney, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna set this down on the table over here. And I really wish this would go into full screen mode here. How do I, okay, tap to start the takeoff. All right, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Here we go, we're gonna take off from the uh, controller. There goes some of the stuff, that's fun. Okay, this is cool. So if you can see this here, it's actually, well it, man, I wish that would rotate fully. Um, it is tracking you, so it is telling me, like you can see in the top down, hopefully. It's got the box, this is follow mode, so it's definitely got me locked in. Let's go ahead and put the controls up here. All right, so I'm gonna go up. Okay, pretty responsive, rotate left. There we go, let me go ahead and move left here so it gets in the camera view. So I can, that is not very responsive. It does not want to move left. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, well it wants to definitely move that way, backwards. And I'm going to land it here real quick as I crash into my television. Um, <laughs> okay, so kind of what I expected. Uh, if you're using your phone, that's kind of what this test was real quick. This is the indoor test um, just to see what it would do. So kind of what I expected. You, your phone is not gonna be your best mode of control. If you are really wanting to control this, you're probably gonna wanna go out and get an RC remote or something, you know, hopefully if you already have a, a DJI drone, this just will pair right to it. You've gotta do the whole pairing process. That'll be a little annoying switching, but no reason to buy an extra controller if you already have one. Um, honestly, I can't wait to get this out into more of an open area. I want to obviously test this. This would be really cool for indoor shoots. That's another thing to note. If you're indoors with this, you don't need to worry about FAA regulations. You're inside. You can do whatever you want, so long as you have the right authorization to fly in the space you're in if you're in somebody else's house or something, obviously. Um, but th that doesn't apply. So registering this drone, if you were only gonna do, like let's say house walkthroughs, or you were gonna do, I don't know, you know, something for a church, something for a business, and you were only ever gonna take off in, in, indoors and you were ever gonna land indoors and never go outside, you would never have to worry about registering this drone, so long as that's the only thing you did, because that's inside. The FAA doesn't control the inside of a house, right? So you don't have to worry about that. But if you take this outside and you use this commercially, as noted, you've gotta buy the uh, remote ID. What I wanna test out, and I'm gonna go grab my goggles three and we're gonna do a test there. I knew, I know with my DJI FPV, it's not remote ID certified, right? It, it doesn't have a remote ID in it. You have to buy the module for it or you have to connect it up to the goggles and to your iPhone or cell phone, and then it uses the GPS and the cell phone to then create that remote ID uh, situation. Now it sucks because you've got to have your phone tethered to your head and that's annoying. But that might be something to get around and that's what I'm going to test out and see if it will do it, uh, that remote ID issue about having to put a module on here. Now you might lose the functionali functionality of the hand takeoff and only you know, running the drone without a controller at all that might be a reason to buy that $100 module um, or $89 module. If you wanna check out the video, I believe it's uh, Pilot Institute had a really good video on this drone and they linked the module to get for this. And I thought it was like 89 bucks or something. It's not big, tiny, you gotta put Velcro on the back here. So definitely worth checking out. Um, I might just in, just initially, this is my first, I haven't flown outside, I haven't fully charged this. I might consider buying the pack with the batteries. And I think that was intentional. 
Um, a single battery, it's gonna take an hour to charge this. So I researched in charging, you're, you're 15 minutes to charge a single battery. So you get 15 minutes of flight time, you're gonna then be waiting an hour to get up in the air again. Uh, I definitely think that that 289 price tag is not terrible for the drone, the batteries, and I believe it comes with a charging case, which does the bi or I guess bi-directional charging, if you wanna call it that. So it will charge a, a phone or something. Um, so I might recommend that, and, and I may end up, depending on how much we like this, I might look at that as an option because it's cheaper to buy the combo than it is to buy this and then to buy all the batteries and the charging case and all of that together. So let's go ahead, let's go outside, let's do some following, let's try the droney mode. Let's go ahead and test the goggles and see if the remote ID does in fact work with this because I'm very interested to know if that's the case. Um, and yeah, I re I'm really impressed with this little drone so far. Can't wait to check out the footage and I'll put some footage up in the video as well just so that you can see what it looks like coming out of the drone. So we've come outside and what we're gonna do is we are going to test this little guy right here. So this little drone right here is pretty amazing. I've tested it inside, and as I said, I was gonna test it out and see if it would work with the headset. So it does work with the new uh, Goggles 3 and the Controller 3 and the Motion 3. Uh, 3. However, it does not allow you to use any of the intelligent flight modes. So if you're gonna fly this, you are going to need to get that uh, module for the top to give it remote ID access. Um, so I'll show you kind of a little bit. It's a little windy. I'm also not going to let this go for very long because it can handle this wind, but I just don't want it to go up really high. So another thing to note with this, you want to make sure that you do not fly this in a dark environment. So what I thought is I'm going to have this track me around the car, got the cyber truck. Why not use it? Right. Um, and so we'll walk around the car with this, have it track me and just see how it does. Right. I'm going to go through the car, see if it'll follow me through the car. And then we'll put on the goggles, see how that works. Um, and just see what it feels like to fly it with the controller. Like, why not? So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. All right. Now you want to put it to where it's aiming at your face. So I've got it on just follow me mode. It's going to be at a medium distance. I believe I can set that in the app. So what I'm going to do real quick before we take off is we're going to go into connect here. So we're going to connect to the um, device. Now I'm going to link this to this phone, which I also have uh, attached the DJI mic to, to the bottom of the iPhone. So theoretically, I'm going to try using the microphone that it can record from this coming through the DJI mic. That's why I've got this set up the way I do. Now, one of the things that said I could do, and I've got follow here. Let me go ahead and go follow. There's supposed to be a way to set how far. Okay, medium follow. So I'm gonna do close follow and follow height is flat. We're just gonna do that and current mode is video, cool. All right, so I'm gonna set this on the ground. I've got this tracking me here. We can see it in the camera, right? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the, take it off. So you Rocket. select your mode. Circle. Rocket. Spotlight. Direction track. Follow. follow mode. Now I believe again, next, next, pay attention to your surroundings. Okay, return the subject. Cool. All right. So, you press and hold. Close. Follow. Three, two, one. All right. And now it's following me. Now what I want to do here is I want to actually make sure that the microphone is on. So I'm going to tell it to use the voice control. I'm sorry. Come on. Circle, camera. Okay, so let me land this real quick. Come here. I love that little thing where if you don't know what you're doing, you just reach your hand out and it comes right back to you. Um, so let me go fly here. There we go. Okay, use the mobile device or an external microphone to record audio for aerial video. During recording, do not turn uh, screen off or switch to another app. So that's what you get when you hit this little button over here in the side. There's a little button for the um, mic icon. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to take this off again. Here we go. Close. Follow. So I'm not going to turn this off. One. There we go. Okay, now it's following me. Now I'm going to walk over here. Now something that's interesting is that you should see this drone track me. So now I can switch back and forth to this drone and it's going to follow me no matter what I do. 
So let's walk around the truck here. So you were demoing a truck, right? You were, or a car, or whatever you were doing. You were saying, "Hey, this is my new car. It's really cool. Check out how awesome this is." And you need a cameraman. Well, this little drone gives you the ability to be a cameraman. It's really, really cool. Plus, given the fact that I've got the mic hooked up to me, the DJI mic, and I'm running it through my phone, I've got an entire like video and audio team with me. I'm very interested to see how this actually works because it may be very loud. So I'm going to walk towards the camera, see what it does. So there I should have gotten very, very close to the camera. And we'll pull this back in frame here. Let me get this camera tracking me. So I've got my uh, DJI Osmo Pocket over here. There we go. I've got tracking on. So let me go ahead. You can actually see in the camera, it's got a box just like it does with your regular drone drawn around you. So let's test this out and see if it'll go through the truck. Okay, so I've got, I'm looking at the camera. I've got my key. I open up the truck here. Okay, so I'm going to bring it out here. The door is going to shut on me. I'm trying to set this up. So I'm going to open the door. Cybertruck kind of works for this, right? Because I can get in. So I'll have it follow me here. See how it does. Open up the seats. Crawl into the car. Did it find me? Come on. Can you get to me? And it looks like it doesn't know quite what to do. So I'm in the truck, and it is having one hard time trying to track me. So here we go. I've got it actually on here. Let's see if it'll... No, it does not want to come in the truck. And it's probably because it's really rather dark in the truck, if you really think about it. It's dark in the truck, and you're not supposed to use this. So let me go ahead. I'm going to walk back over here. So again, I love this follow feature. So all you do, I'm going to get this camera tracking me again here. All you do is you reach your hand out. And there you go, just like that, and it landed. So I have audio from that. Now, real quick here, before this battery dies, because this battery is only 15 minutes max, that's what you're gonna get out of this thing. It's a little tiny drone. I highly recommend grabbing the pack with the three batteries. It's an hour to charge this. So you are talking about an hour for one flight of 15 minutes. So you're definitely gonna want that three pack of batteries. Um, it's like another 100 bucks or 80 bucks. Definitely recommend picking it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect up my goggles to this and the motion control, and we're gonna go ahead and fly it through the truck. Why not? I believe that this does give you remote ID if you are connected to a cell phone and a pair of goggles. Now you lose the ability to use all of the cool features of this drone pretty much because you've gotta be tied to a headset and then it's in manual mode and it doesn't fly itself. Um, I think you can connect it up to a regular controller where you can draw on the screen and track and stuff and it will do that, but I don't have that, so. Okay, so I've got it recording in the goggles now, I hope. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna prime the engines here, or the motors, whatever. Now, you're gonna press and hold this button and hope the drone doesn't take off and go completely insane. I've had that happen. There we go, we're up. That is pretty responsive. I don't know if you can see it. I'll back up here a little bit, fly around the yard, try not to hit myself in the head. There we go. So yeah, this is pretty responsive. It's pretty good. Whoa, into the tree we go. It's pretty responsive into the tree. I did not know I was that close. Although it recovered nicely, I will give it credit for that. So we're gonna go ahead and do a fly through of the truck. Here we go. So we're gonna go in and we go in through the truck and look at that. That flew in there really nicely. So come up over the hood of the truck there. Come back at the camera. I mean, this is pretty good. I'm, you know, I've flown the Avada and the Avada 2 and the DJI FPV and it's really, really similar. Um, I get cl really close to those doors. I'm, it's been a whole minute since I've done FPV. I've been traveling too much and haven't had the time. So let's go ahead, let's go inside here and let's just see what you could do. Like, could you go in and then pan the camera around and fly through the front of the car? Now this is gonna be an interesting thing for the drone because I don't know, I mean, look at that. I'm doing a shot inside the Cybertruck and it's doing pretty well. It's handling this pretty well. 
I mean, it's not a flawless fly through, but that was not bad at all. And then I can bring this around right here, park this in front of me, put it right by my face, look at the drone, reach my hand out, and there you go. That is a really cool little drone. So you can use both the Motion Controller 3, you can use the Goggles 3 to get your FPV type look, or you can just use the controller if you want. You don't have to use the goggles, you don't have to use um, the motion controller, you can use the, this one, the controller three, the FPV controller, or if you have one of the RC controllers, they work as well. So very, very cool. I really, really like this drone. Um, it has a lot of really neat features. And I mean, I just flew this through the inside, the cab of the truck, right? And I was never worried about, I was worried about crashing, right? but I was never worried about clipping something, clipping the, the seat or hitting the dash or something like that. I will go ahead and try one more thing. I'll show you what I mean by controlling this with a phone. So let me power this off real fast. Let me go ahead, disconnect this, and disconnect the controllers here. And we are losing daylight. It is, sun is going down earlier and earlier, and I have to, figure out how to get out and do these videos so it's definitely becoming troublesome uh, and I cannot get that app to close here let me go ahead and close that I will repower on the drone because you at least in my experience when you switch um, controllers you have to go ahead and switch or power off the drone and turn it back on so let me go ahead and turn on the fly app here um, there we go hopefully it sees the drone Give it a second, it does take a whole minute. There we go. Okay, so it sees the drone. And you'll notice that you actually get this little icon, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a little icon of a fly symbol, right? It's got like, or of the Wi-Fi symbol, and it says connect. So it's connecting via Wi-Fi, not via your RC, you know, controller radio frequency. I guess Wi-Fi is technically a radio frequency, but you know what I mean. Um, so let's go ahead, let's get this connected. There we go, we are connected up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and fly this. I tried this in the unboxing when I got this out of the box and I will tell you that it did not do well. So I'm outside now. We'll go ahead and start it. You can start it from the app. Now it's tracking me right now, but I can switch to a remote control. So there's the remote control. It doesn't like this wind. So if I go up, so I'm gonna pan the camera over here, right? There we go. So if I go up, okay, it goes up. If I go down, it goes down. Let's rotate left. Slowly. Let's rotate right. Okay. Now where it had a problem was not those. Where it had a problem was going backwards and forwards. So I'm gonna go backwards away from me. Okay, that worked this time. Now, okay. Nope forwards I am full stick on the drone and oh there we go move left move left doesn't work move right doesn't work move left move right nothing so forward doesn't go back back goes back and that's about the only thing I can get to work is back so just something to note that if you are using this drone really little noisy so if you are using this drone and you're trying to fly it with your controller at least in my case forward does not work back works great uh, left and right work great as uh, kind of and up and down work fine but forward when you want the drone to come at you um, not so much so that's kind of a problem when you're using a controller as i don't know or your phone as a controller when you don't want it to crash and you say you know i want you to go forward and not crash and it goes back into what you don't want it to crash into so just something to keep in mind but i will hop back inside and give you my final thoughts on this little guy and whether or not i think it's worth it uh, but yeah so far i it's a pretty cool little drone So that has been my review of the DJI Neo, and I have to say, this is a fun little drone. Um, 
I'm really glad that DJI released an update to their software and I'm glad I waited to film this out until that happened. I will go ahead and leave the footage in there of one of my complaints about this drone and that was the manual flight controls from the phone. They were quite honestly terrible and they fixed it. Thank you, DJI. I love the fact that I can now control the drone as you saw coming at me and no problem tracking forward, left, right, up, down. It works really, really well. Um, I have nicknamed this drone Drony. Yes, it has a droning mode, but I feel like that is just a really good name for this. I will personally be sending this back. Now, why will I send this drone back? Because if I am going to get this drone, I really made a mistake in not purchasing the extra batteries for this drone. I feel like that is something that I should have looked into more and the charge times because this drone is going to be a total of 50 minutes to charge from zero. And I only get 12 max 15 minutes of flight time out of this. So I really, really feel like I need more flight time just because if I'm gonna be using this for any kind of fly throughs, as I flew through the Cybertruck, any kind of house fly throughs, you know, or just having fun with the drone, I really need that extra flight time because while, you know, maybe two batteries are charging, I'm flying the other one, or maybe while one battery is charging, I can keep that cycle going. So I definitely recommend if you're gonna pick up the Neo, get the extra battery kit. Uh, it's not that much more. I believe it's like $80 more. So yeah, it's about half the price of the drone to get the extra batteries, but it's worth it in the long run, unless you're somebody who doesn't mind waiting an hour to fly your drone and you have the downtime. At that point, then yeah, totally pick up this little drone. It's $199. It's super fun. As you saw, it flies really well. They fixed the controller for the phone. And so that was really my biggest complaint about this drone. And I was really having a hard time liking it because of that feature. And now that that is fixed, this is a really cool drone. The footage is not the best. And I will say that I have seen better footage out of the 1080 from this than the 4K30. And I will put some of that footage up in here just so you can see. I feel like the 4K footage is just a little grainy for my liking. Now, yes, I could go into the settings and I could tweak it a little more and probably get a little bit better quality out of it, but I just feel like that is not, this drone doesn't do very well in the 4K setting. And I've seen other videos on YouTube stating the same thing, where the 1080 is just a little bit better than the 4K. So if you're gonna shoot with this drone, maybe consider putting this into 1080 mode. But besides that, that has been my review of the DJI Neo. I really like the drone and I will probably be trying to pick up this drone, but with the extra batteries down the road, and that way I get that maximum amount of flight time. So I hope you liked the video, and if you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, share, and we will see you in the next video.